Today we have come to exhort ourselves on the topic that says the power of the word of God. The power of the word of God. Our Bible passage shall be taken from Psalm 119. Psalm 119 verse 104 to 105. I read, Through thy precepts I get understanding. Therefore I hate every false way. Psalm 105 which is the last verse. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Praise the Lord. Now we are talking about the power of the word of God. There is power in the word. There is life in the word. The word of God is not a story book. The word of God is not a literature book. The word of God is not a textbook. But the word of God is life in God himself. Whatever God does, he does it through his word. And we have always looked at it that there are two major instruments that God normally makes use of whenever he wants to change people's lives. He uses his word and he uses fire. Many times when he wants to change situations and circumstances, he speaks a word into that situation and there's a change. And when he wants to change people's lives at times, he sends fire and there's a change. So today we are focusing on the word of God as an instrument of revival. We are looking at the word of God as an instrument of change in the hand of God. So there is life in the word. There is a life in God's word that brings healing. There is a life in God's word that provokes miracles. There is a life in God's words that provokes signs and wonders. There is a life that when you get it from God's word, things change for better in your life. Even physically and spiritually, you will know that there is a change in your life. But it's a pity that there are some people that despite the power in the word of God, it's not benefiting them. Despite the power that we have in the word of God, it's not making any difference in their lives. Now, why? Why? And that exactly takes me to the next thing. And those are the keys with which we can activate the word of God. Keys with which we can tap into the life in the word of God. And if you can faithfully use these keys, you will see the word of God making a difference in your life. Number one, we must know the word. We must know the word. The Bible says in John chapter 8 verse 32, And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So it is the truth you know that will make you free, not just the truth. The Bible didn't say the truth shall make you free. The Bible says you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So it is the truth you know that will make you free. And the Bible says it clearly in John chapter 17 verse 17, that thy word is truth. So we can translate that place as to say, and you shall know the word, which is the truth, and that word we set you free. So if you know what God has said concerning you, then it's easy to see changes in your life. And I've normally said, I'll say it again, the word of God is like a mirror. So when you know what the word of God says concerning you, we can liken it onto you seeing yourself in the mirror. So when you see yourself in the mirror, you have an idea of what you look like. Nobody can tell you this is what you look like when actually you have seen what you look like. So the word of God is like a mirror too. So when you see into it and you know what it says, it makes you to see your picture, your true picture in the word of God. So nobody can tell you otherwise. You see yourself as blessed. You see yourself as the righteousness of God. You see yourself as healed. That is the power in knowing the word of God. And I pray for somebody here. May God increase your knowledge and understanding of his word in the name of Jesus. Then you must believe the word. It's not just enough to know the word or to know what the Bible says about your life or your situation. You must also believe that word. There is power in faith. The Bible was speaking about the children of Israel in Hebrews chapter 4 verse 2. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 2. It says the same word that was spoken unto us was also preached unto them. But the word did not profit them because it was not mixed with faith in them that had it. So when you hear the word and your faith is not in the word, it will not produce any result in your life. It will just be as if you are listening to stories or hearing tales by moonlight. But when you believe the word, it provokes signs and wonders in your life. And that's why the Bible says in Luke chapter 1 verse 45, Elizabeth under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, she spoke to Mary. She he said, Blessed is she that believeth, for there shall be a performance of those things that were told her from the Lord. So faith activates the fulfillment of God's promises. Faith is still the performance of the word of God. So if you can believe what the word of God has said concerning your life and situation, you will see their manifestation in the mighty name of Jesus. Then we must also meditate on the word. We must meditate on the word. The Bible says in Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. Say this book of the law shall not depart 
out of thy mouth but upon it thou shalt meditate day and night and thou shalt observe to do according to all that is written therein says and you shall make your ways prosperous and you shall have good success so you must meditate on the word you must preserve the word in your heart because it is what you know it is what you have taken time to meditate on that you know that becomes a part and parcel of you so that no matter the situation and circumstances that you come across what you already know inside is what will work for you you can't give what you don't have so if you have not taken your time to meditate on the word there will be nothing that will be part of you so that when problem comes you have nothing with which to challenge the problem and there is power because it is in the place of meditation that we catch revelation the reason why many of us today cannot boast of having deep revelations in the word of god is because we have not taken time to embark on deep meditation and i pray that as you make up your mind that you meditate on the word of god this year you will see the word working wonders for you in the name of jesus then another thing you must do with the word so that the word of god can produce results in your life is that you must pray the word you must pray the word in fact the most powerful prayer points are prayer points that are prayed based on the promises in the word of god the most powerful prayers are prayers that we offer unto God based on the promises in the word of God. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 5, verse 14 to 15, said this is the confidence that we have in him, that whenever we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if he heareth us, we know that we have that which we have asked of him. And the will of God is embedded in the word of God. So we can translate that place to say that this is the confidence that we have in him, that whenever we ask anything according to his word, he heareth us. God cannot resist his word. He even said it that his word is higher than his name. So whenever you go to God in the place of prayer and you remind him of what he has said concerning you in his word, and when you remind him of what he has said concerning that situation you are passing through in his word, then he has no option but to manifest himself because he cannot lie. The Bible has said it clearly in Numbers 23, 19 that God is not a man that he should lie and neither a son of man that he should repent. That if he has said anything, he will make it good. If he has made the promise, he will surely fulfill it and the bible says in romans 3 14 that god cannot lie hebrews chapter 6 verse 18 also says it is impossible for god to lie so whenever you go to god in prayer you say father you said in your word and it is truly in the word then god almighty will know that he has said it so that guarantees that he will answer your prayer that guarantees that that word will produce results in your life so the word is also meant to be prayed on so you must pray the word prayer is not just shouting to god talking to god shouting to the ear but it is when you take time to discover promises in the word concerning what you want to ask for and you present it before god such prayers cannot go unanswered and i pray for somebody here as you cry unto god this year concerning the promises he has made concerning you in his word you will see the manifestation of the results in the mighty name of jesus then we must preach the word we must preach the word the bible says about the disciples of jesus in mark chapter 16 verse 20 says and they went forth and they preached everywhere and the lord walked with them confirming the word with signs and the bible says in mark chapter 16 verse 15 say go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creation and there's a place in psalm 68 that also says the lord gave the word great is the company of those that proclaimed it so when you preach the word god has no option but to confirm that word that you are preaching if you are preaching that jesus saves then jesus will show his saving power if you are preaching that jesus heals then jesus will show that healing power if you are preaching that jesus blesses people then he will show that he has the power to bless through your preaching so the word of god must be preached for you to produce results in your life i don't know how you have been treating the word of god before now maybe you just see it as a book that you only take to church on sunday the book of god is more than that it's the book of the law It's the word of god in written form it has more power than you can ever imagine so take the word of god more seriously and you will see more results in your life this year maybe you are hearing me and you know it within yourself that you have not been treating the word of god as you should be treating it or if you don't even have a good relationship with jesus the word of god himself and you want to do that so that the word of god can be producing results in your life what you just need to do is very simple wherever you as you are just hearing me now just close your eyes and pray this prayer with me with all your heart just say lord jesus i come to you today i know that i am a sinner and i cannot help myself forgive me my sins and cleanse me with your precious blood cancel my name from the book of death and write my name in the book of life lord jesus 
I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. If you have prayed that prayer with all your heart, I'm so happy for you. I want to congratulate you. You are now a child of God. Welcome to the family of God. Just look for a good church, a Bible-practicing church that is close to you. And um, just join them for your spiritual nourishment and upbringing. And I can assure you that you have a wonderful time.